There is much concern at the moment about some uh, proposed legislation looking at hate speech in Aotearoa. What would this mean in terms of restrictions on various groups within society and restrictions on our own rights for freedom of speech in New Zealand? Joining me on the programme now is campaign manager for the Free Speech Union, Jonathan Ayling. Jonathan, kia ora, thank you for your time today. Morning, Andrew. Great to be here. Now, uh, when we look at some of the proposals, this has been put forward by the government, a, a discussion document. There are some things in the, that you're a bit, well, more than a bit concerned about. Talk to us about some of the things you're worried about. That's exactly right. So the government has released uh, six proposals through the Ministry of Justice, which uh, they're currently taking consultation on. And uh, the six proposals do four things. They broaden the uh, number of groups that will specifically be protected. They move the legislation that's relevant from the Human Rights Act to the Crimes Act. And that sounds like a technicality, but it's quite significant. They also increase the penalty and they lower the bar for what would be considered hate speech. We're, we're generally concerned uh, across the board that this would actually be an overreach of the government and affect our civil liberties quite uh, dramatically. I know a few people were saying, well, hate speech, this is a bad thing. We should be doing everything we can as a society to crack down on hate speech, especially in response to the, uh, the tragic events that unfolded in Christchurch. In some ways, the government is at least positioning this as a response to those events. Well, that is correct, and I would answer that in two ways. The first would be absolutely within our communities as a society, we should be uh, very careful of the speech that we use. We're in no way challenging the notion that there is hate speech, hateful speech, and that hateful speech is harmful. But we just think that the government trying to insert itself into our public conversations will only uh, uh, make that a worse consequence than what it otherwise could be. On the other hand, I would also note that while the government is laying uh, these changes at the foot of the tragic attack that happened in Christchurch, nothing in these uh, law changes would actually have stopped that attack. Yeah. Nothing would have become more lawful, uh, sorry, more unlawful uh, in the attack. And so uh, it's a bit disingenuous in my mind to try and link those two together. Freedom of speech is something which we take for granted in a, in a Western democracy. Do you feel that freedom of speech will be restricted by this, uh, by these proposals? Absolutely. There's no question in our mind. Not only freedom of speech, but freedom of religion, freedom of conscience, freedom of opinion. These are the civil liberties upon which our democracy is based, as you've said. And as uh, a Christian, I would say, uh, while a secular notion, free speech is actually a great blessing to the spreading of the gospel. You know, we don't want to protect uh, free speech only for ourselves to stand up for our own rights. It's also so that the gospel will have a platform to be spoken from and there are necessarily offensive elements of the gospel yeah. the, the, the gospel is foolishness to the Greek and insult to the Jew but to those of us who have been saved it is the very power of God. We're not a Christian society uh, and, and I mean there's, there's different views, there's different views of faith there's different uh, views um, perhaps that reject faith altogether how can we have civil conversations in a way which isn't a causing offence to people who have strongly held views that are perhaps opposed to our own. Well, we must be very considerate of the way that we do it, to do that with gentleness and respect. But I also think we, we can't be afraid of the fact that at times our opinions will uh, conflict and they will cause offence. And we actually need to be bigger than that. I think to an extent our society has come to equate offence or even just disagreement with hatred mm. and the harm that then comes with that. And I would say, no, we're actually cutting ourselves off from an opportunity to learn, an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to explore very fundamental questions in our society, we're actually severing that if we can't have conversations where we will necessarily disagree at times. When we look at hatred in society, often hatred uh, flourishes where there is a lack of communication, where there is a lack of understanding, that there are stereotypes defining, well, this group's like that and that group's like the other. If we can't have the conversation, in some ways, hatred is going to flourish even more, perhaps. And that's, that's exactly right. My concern with these proposals is not only for my, my rights, but actually, more importantly, for the marginalised and for the minority in our community, those who already face uh, perhaps a, a systemic opposition. The freedom of speech for them to have opinions that perhaps I don't agree 
agree with or perhaps the majority of New Zealanders don't hold, that's actually a fundamental aspect of them having representation as well and protecting them. And so I think while the intention behind these changes are very laudable and noble, you know, we want to do something in response to the horrific attack that occurred in Christchurch, these intentions are actually the, the pathway to hell. You know, the yeah. good intentions pa pave the way to hell, as the saying goes. And, and I, I'm concerned that actually in the long run, this will hurt, uh, the churches will hurt minority communities and will actually hurt the public conversation we're seeking to have. And from a free speech union point of view, let's defend the rights of everybody to have an opinion to articulate that with gentleness and respect, as you say, and perhaps especially those that we don't agree with. Well, that's the essence of free speech. No one disagrees with the free speech of someone you agree with. Exactly. You agree, you, that's tolerance is only tolerance if you disagree with someone. Yeah. You don't tolerate someone who agrees with you. Mm. Um, and so I would say that this is a, a basic nature of uh, how we explore a public conversation that yeah. is fruitful and healthy and leads us forward. You know, some of the groups that the government is uh, proposing to include in the legislation are um, groups such as transgender, or non-binary mm -hmm. um, and, and while of course we should recognize people's right and decisions to live as they wish to to elevate them in a piece of law outside of public discussion actually removes the public debate that that our society is having at large at the moment o across the board there are those who agree and disagree with the immutability of gender and that kind of thing if we can't have that conversation we actually can't move on together and as you've pointed out that will actually then um, force us to pursue more extreme forms Forms of expression in the long run. There is something that and it seems particularly prevalent on social media where if I say something on social media somebody disagrees with me then immediately that is that is hate speech. Having a different opinion is hate speech. Herein lies the problem. What is hate speech? Is there a proposed definition from, from the government, from any of these discussion documents that says, and this is what we actually mean by hate speech, this is how we define it. Andrew, that is the crux of the issue in our mind. Uh, internationally, there are numerous different expressions of hate speech legislation, but no jurisdiction in the world has been able to conclusively define hate, because hate by definition is a very subjective thing. Yeah. That doesn't make it um, uh, insignificant, no, but it still is something that we personally feel. And so for for legislation to try and insert itself and define uh, specifically what we're talking about here, it will create a very irresponsible, unworkable piece of legislation that either will never be applied yeah. or will, a far worse scenario, be, be overly applied. And, and, and that presents, a, you know, as citizens, we need to be able to know what is in the law and what is outside of the law. The subjective nature of hate makes it very difficult for us to understand, would this be across the line? Would this be in the line? Yeah. No one would know. And let's dis decide that as a society, not on Facebook. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Now, uh, there is um, an opportunity for this to be discussed pu publicly. This is a discussion document. This is the nature of democracy. Having said that, though, Pretty small timeline. Submissions need to be in by the end of this week? That's correct. Uh, Friday, August 6th is when the submissions will close. You know, we have found the government to be very eager to operate, uh, to move forward with this, and the, the submission time frame has been very short. However, as the Free Speech Union, we have been uh, equally eager to see everyone with the opportunity to submit and have their voice yep. heard on that. And this is a moment where we need to stand up and speak for the freedom of speech. It's a lose it, use it or lose it type scenario. Yep. And so we have created a website the freespeechsubmission.com, freespeechsubmission.com. You can go there, and we've prepared a template to help individuals submit to the Ministry of Justice. Free on speech this unions issue. not telling people what to say, are they? Not, a, not at all. No, no, no. <laughs> the whole point is uh, our union is comprised of people who agree on nothing else That's except good. the ability to stand and speak what we believe. And so uh, we would really encourage your viewers to make sure that their voice is heard at this. We're, we're just trying to facilitate the yeah. conversation. We also have a petition running at savefreespeech.com. .nz. And that will be presented in Parliament to say actually tens of thousands of New Zealanders up to this point um, have said, look, we don't want you policing our thought, we don't want you policing our speech. We have a responsibility to uh, care for each other with, uh, with consideration and respect, and we don't always do that as well as we could. But we need the leaders in society to raise the tone of conversation, not outlaw speech. Yeah. That's not a productive way of moving forward. We actually need to seek to um, uh, communicate in ways that are 
are effective, even if they are not always opinions we would agree with. Mm. But outlawing, banning, simply prohibiting speech is not an effective way to actually move that conversation on in our society. I, I know there'll be people listening to this conversation who, who may be thinking, well, maybe this is just the way society is going. This seems to be the trend that a Western uh, secular culture is heading in. From a free speech union point of view, are you optimistic? What's the best case scenario for, for what's unfolding in New Zealand? I, I, we are optimistic, and, and that's because New Zealand has been founded on civil liberties. We have a very unique history that actually has um, imperfectly but attempted to incorporate the civil liberties that are most um, necessary for a flourishing democracy. And we can talk about these as secular terms, but they are great blessings in yeah. our lives as well. So we are optimistic. We've had the media, we've had politicians, we've had tens of thousands of New Zealanders join us and say, no, this isn't the Kiwi way. And that's our message. The Kiwi way is to allow for differences, allow for perspectives maybe we don't agree with, maybe that actually challenge the very nature of our, our deepest beliefs. But we actually still believe that truth will out in the end, if we yep. can say that. And, uh, and as we allow that conversation to proceed, people will, uh, will be able to see by the fruit of those conversations what is the correct way to go. And so we think that uh, the Kiwi way will prevail, if I can say that, yep. and people will come on board as they continue to submit, as they continue to, stand, uh, to speak with the Ministry of Justice and say, this is an unnecessary. We see where you're coming from, but we don't think it's necessary. We don't think it will be helpful to the public conversation we're trying to have. Well, the Kiwi way also might say she'll be right, but actually not if we do nothing on this one. And by doing something, I don't mean complaining on Facebook, actually taking some concrete action. Of course, you can do that through prayer, uh, but also add to your prayer some action. Those details, again, for people that want to engage with the Free Speech Union uh, submission process and also for the petition. What are those details again, Jonathan? The submission processes, uh, process is at freespeechsubmission.com. That'll take less than three minutes to go through. Okay. It's a quick process. We've made it as easy as possible. And the petition is savefreespeech.co.nz. Well, it has been wonderful to have this free speech conversation together, Jonathan. Hopefully no insults. <laughs> <Not> insults. <laughs> exactly. Thanks for joining us. Cheers.